All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about UVW unwrapping, which is one of the things I get asked about probably the most of anything because it's so mysterious and so hard to figure out. It's just confusing. It's not the best UI that 3ds Max has, and there's other tools you can use to plug into it, but it just isn't intuitive. Let's put it that way. So let's just go over this real quick. Now, it's important that we haven't burned in the Turbo Smooth yet. That's an important point because when selecting everything for UVW unwrapping, we want it to be as simple as possible. So first step is to look at this and see where the different panels of fabric are gonna be. So obviously this arm, the whole inside of it is gonna be one and then it goes into a seam here and then there's two panels here and you can kind of see how the fabric is broken up. We will want to unwrap it in the same way that the fabric is actually applied in real life to that chair. And we can't see everything about the chair and how the fabric is laid out in a pattern, but we want to basically mimic it. So let's get this whole bottom. Let's select this whole bottom piece at once. And there's lots of different ways to select everything, but I mean, ultimately we just have to do a lot of it manually sometimes. So the whole bottom is there. These sides are what we don't want. So maybe do that. That's all good there. Then we need all of this. Nope. Control, select. Yeah, and then we need the whole bottom. Let's take our spline too and just hide it for right now. This is where you might want to ignore back facing on your selections. Okay, I was having some selection issues there. Okay, let's do that swipe there. And then make sure we don't have the sides that we don't want. Sometimes this can be the hardest part of the whole process is getting your selections right. That's something wrong with the model right there that I should go back and fix. That's all fine, as long as it's in that seam. We'll have to speed this part of the video up. I'm gonna clean up these little parts that I'm just finding now. Target welding them. It's from that latest extrusion I did. That should work. Okay, we need some way to isolate these all together. So what I usually do is set this to an ID, select ID, set ID. We'll set it to five, I'll set it to 10, set it to something that nothing else is in the scene. And then I go ahead and I hide it. You can hide it by saying hide selected, just like that. And that just makes it easier to select new things as we go along. So this whole piece, let's see, this piece, not those pieces. This is another ignore back facing thing we want. Yeah, it's working okay. So let's grow that one time. Yeah, and let's get all these little pieces in here. This is that side panel. Make sure it's all connected together. And we'll set this to nine and then hide it. Okay, this one, another panel of fabric, it's gonna be set to eight and we'll hide it. Okay, and I'm just gonna go through like this, select all this stuff and just break up all these panels into some way that I can select them. And so I'm gonna use the uh, polygon material IDs, which is usually used for materials, right? I'm gonna use that as my method of just selecting them because you can select by ID. And that way when I get into the unwrapping UI, I can just say, highlight all my IDs that are eight, highlight all my IDs that are nine. And that'll just make it easy for me to select the panels of fabric that I want. 
Let's make sure that one's clean. We'll go to eight, set ID eight, and then hide. I think I might have been hitting select ID before instead of set ID. You need to make sure it's setting the ID. Okay, but I'm going to go through and do this for all of them and kind of speed up the video as I go. But this is what I'm doing, making sure everything has an ID that's unique. I've got some geometry under here that I didn't want. Okay, so every panel is on its own selection now. So if I select ID 8, then it's selecting this panel of fabric. And you know, it's not perfect, but all the parts that are important, like I could break those into two different pieces of fabric if I wanted. But everything that's important is there. Just be careful with the set ID versus select ID. But you can see I can select all the different panels of fabric. Okay, so once we have that set up, and again, we're ignoring the turbo smooth for now. But once we have that set up, then we can go into the Unwrap UVW modifier. And really, we just need to go into these different... Well, actually, the best thing to do now, since, since we're in here, we can just select IDs. So we can select 5, select ID 7. Okay, and what you can do is then just kind of break that away by hitting the planar map. And if you go into the Open UV Editor, you can see in here so there's our whole chair and we just broke away this planar map which maps it into this single UVW tile and separates it from the rest of the bunch it makes like a shell is what I call it but it just makes its own fabric panel basically detached from the rest of the chair and obviously we want to align it like that on the Y so now that panel is laid out with planar mapping to fit one tile and it's separated from the rest we can then do that with all of them. So we can select ID 8. And we can planar map that one if we want. Planar map it. Lay it out in the Y or the Z. Let's see. That one really... That one should just lay out flat like that in the X. Yes. Put that over here. Select ID 9. Lay that out flat in the X to fit in one tile. So you see we're just splitting these fabric panels into different panels. Let's select 10, that bottom piece. This one's going to be interesting. And we can just put a basic mapping on it. That I'm using planar and that just separates it from the bunch. Scales it to the tile. Does a couple things for us that's handy. As you can see, it's creating these dark green seams, which is where each of the panels been split from the other panels. So the same green seams can be seen over here on each panel. So again, I just need to go through and do this for every different material ID I've got. This one hasn't been split off yet. So ID 6, planar map it so that it fits into the tile and get the one that looks the most reasonable like that. Okay, and remember in here, this is just showing us a flattened representation now of each of these different panels that we had in 3D, and each one is formed to fit into a single UVW tile. If we put a checker pattern on this, then we can see, by showing checker pattern here, we can see how this is all laying out. So you can see some of these are still completely stretched because they haven't been flattened out yet. Some of them have been flattened out, but still get stretched. That's what we're trying to work out. We're trying to make it so that the UVW mapping, we tell it explicitly how each one of these tiles is going to fit onto each one of these faces. OK, 
Okay, that's what we're doing. So I still need to keep going through here. There's nothing on five, four. Okay, again, planar map. Let's get it like, yeah, probably like this. We're gonna have to do another trick on that one. Oh, no, we're not. Okay, we'll get to that though. Keep going here. Each thing needs to be separated out. Good. I think this is the last one. Okay, now all our fabric panels are separate. What's going on with this one down here though? That's already split out, but you can see it's perpendicular to my 2D view here. So it's just stretching these ones all the way across. So that's the kind of thing that will get worked out as we go through this UVW mapping. So if we select all this, and usually it's, I mean, you can pack it like this and pack it all into one space so that all the squares are the same size, basically, or close to it. Okay, so now one tile is covering all the polygons. But another thing we need to do is this quick peel. See what happens here. Okay, so what happened is it took the ones that had faces perpendicular and things like that, and it just peeled them like an orange. Right, so like, for example, this piece that goes all the way around like this, there's no way to flatten that because some of the faces are perpendicular to another. So we told it to lay it out flat, peel it like an orange, essentially. Okay, so you can see all the shapes now are kind of laid out flat. And this one is actually this piece I was just referring to. Okay, so you can see it's got a little bit of curve into it. So the checkers also have a curve which you probably don't want. There's also some of the checkers are rotated, which you probably don't want. So now we can just turn on select by element and select these, and it'll select the whole thing at once. We can just kind of straighten them out. You probably want to make sure that they're both facing the same direction. So like, if you look, that one, that's actually the side, and this is the other side. So you actually want it like this. And this one is the same, where that's that side and that's that side. So you actually want to put it like this. And then you can do things like move these right up next to each other because you know those go together, right? The top is what it is. I mean, it's pretty much how it's gonna be. I think the bottom, this is the one that needs some help here. You can, to straighten this all out, what you can do is again, select the whole element and say, perhaps a relax would work here and I like to set this to one and say start relax and that just flattens the whole thing out for you okay and that one was easy sometimes relax has a hard time if it's all jumbled up but this one was very easy it just needed to kind of relax everything and straighten it out and it did a great job there these ones obviously need help so again find the correct side it's really just this And probably this let's see let's make sure yeah that and that yep yeah. and then uh, we can move these over to each other because they go together those are a match you can see these blue lines blue line here and blue line here shows that that's where those two would connect in 3d space over here so now let's look at our checkerboards look how perfect it looks okay now if you wanted no, that, I mean, this is right. This So where the fabric continues across the seam, the checkerboard is continuing across the seam where it gets broken up at a physical seam in real life, then the fabric wouldn't continue across that. So in 3D, it's not continuing across that either. So this is actually really well laid out now. So if you took a fabric that has a pattern on it, we'll just use our chair pattern. Now you can see that that's tiling. Well, let's look in here and we'll see what that's doing exactly. It's kind of weird, hard to understand. But if you open the UVW editor and then bring that chair up as, well, we could pick the texture. Okay, we're putting that texture in there. So now with this texture applied, this bitmap, 
I now put that in as my UVW tile here. These faces will show exactly what this image is showing behind it, if that makes sense. Okay, so you can see that if I move this around, it's going to show the image that's behind it. So if I move this out into pure white, it's going to show pure white like that. Okay, so we're explicitly telling how this image is going to go into every polygon of this object. Okay, so kind of confusing. If I set this to multiple tiles, like 10, you'll now see it tiling perfectly around my chair and everything is mapped properly throughout the chair, everywhere, on the bottom, on the sides, everywhere, and the seams are all correct too. Okay, now obviously this isn't the kind of texture you'd be using this for. What you would actually do is go into here and you'd get rid of this texture behind. Come on, checker pattern, okay? Then you'd say, tools, render UVW template, 1024 by 1024, we'll, okay, fine, that's, that's fine, and it'll give you this, and you can just save it. So I'll call it UVW example dot JPEG. Okay, now you can just go into Photoshop and paint each polygon exactly how you want it. Okay, so you can see how that would give you a lot of power because now you can paint wrinkles in, you can paint stitching in, you can paint anything in explicitly into a specific part of that model. So let's go into Photoshop and just look at that really quickly because this video is getting long. Okay, in Photoshop what I do is desaturate, invert, control I, and then make this into its own layer, set it to multiply, and then put a clean layer below it where you can start painting. And the multiply, what it does is it makes it so that you can see those lines. Those lines will multiply themselves onto anything you draw below, meaning you still know where you're painting. Okay, so as an example, let's just put some bright colors in here. We'll leave the rest white. And on this one, on this particular part of the chair, we are going to say hi. Okay, so each polygon has its own UV assigned, and we can paint it however we want. Now, I usually just turn off those lines. Let's put a solid base below it of white. So the lines are the construction lines that are exported for us from Max. We don't want them in the final diffuse map. So everything's going to be white except for those ones that I explicitly painted. We'll just call this underscore diffuse. And then we'll go back into Max and apply it. And put it onto our chair. And of course it only wants to tile one time because we drew everything within a one tile box. Okay, there it is. It says hi right across the back and these two have the colors that we painted. Now obviously this isn't what you really want this chair to look like, but in Photoshop you could get a nice leather texture and lay it out and paint it exactly how you want for each part of the chair. And that's the power of UVW mapping and unwrapping. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. That's a simplified, quick version of UVW unwrapping. But super powerful tool, especially for furniture, because of the way fabric panels would be laid out on it and because you can add detail by painting it in with the texture.